Hello viewers, my name is Chase Clover, and I just got home, but I'm going to do this review, and uh, you will get it, technically it is on Thursday, but I'm going to count it as Wednesday, because I'm still doing it the night of Wednesday, or technically, like, just an hour or two after uh, Thursday began, but, um, this is my review on the September 3rd, 2014 edition of USW Wednesday Night Intensity. This is the 86th Intensity, I believe. Um, we are four weeks away until Top Rope 2014, which means there were many Top Rope qualifying matches. There will be a few next week as well, but this show, for the most part, was good. There were some parts in it where I didn't like. There was one match that I expected to like, but didn't like, and was really confused about. Um, but most of the other matches were pretty good and were very interesting, and I'll get to them in this review. So without further ado, let's start start the review. And this is the, um, this is the first intensity after Capital Carnage 2014. So we start off the show with a promo between Capital and Enigma. Um, Capital starts talking about how he defeated. Seth and how Seth is now cashing in his rematch that he's, you know, he has the right to, um, and then Enigma came out after Capital said his reign was going to be a record reign, and Enigma came out and told him that, you know, he may have had a fluke victory the night before, and so we'll see who the better champion is later on in the night. Um, it turned out not to be none, to be neither of them, but we'll we'll talk about that in a, a little while. Um, but anyway, it was pretty much just a promo to put to like bury Capital College 2014 in the ground. It was kind of like that, just bury the pay per view in the ground and get it over with. No confusion. It's over and done with. It's finalized. Yeah. So that's pretty much what that was. Just the you know the sign off of Capital College. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Um, first match on the card, and I'm going to say that this, you know what, never mind, I'll, I'll say it at the end of the, uh, review. Uh, this, the first match on the card was a topper of qualifying match. Simon Saint defeated Tall Man Chris Ross. Um, so therefore Simon Saint will be in the 20-man to top rope match, um, which will take place in four weeks at Top Rope 2014. Um, Simon Saint had a, he had a bunch of, um, punches and kicks in the midsection of Cap, of Chris Ross, kind of making it harder for him to stand up straight or whatever. Um, I forgot what he, I think he won off of, uh, off of, uh, his finishing move, uh, the frog splash, I believe. I think he performed a frog splash, or he had a frog splash on Tall Man Chris Ross, and, um... and pinned him for the win, um, so, uh, you know, what I know for sure, though, is that Simon Saint will be in the 20-man top rope match, he's won the, he's won the right, uh, so, whatever, uh, um, this match was pretty much just, like, a sum-up of what I'm guessing is, This is, sorry, I'm working on my computer right now. Um, this match is something that I think of as a rivalry finalizer. Kind of like, you know, I, I guess Simon Saint and Philip Akron, and I'll get to Philip Akron in a minute. But I guess they're having this rivalry, so I think this is what sums up the rivalry and, you know, says this is a rivalry, this is the start, and, you know, you, we have another rivalry instead of having just a bunch of vague uh, promos from week to week just to let you know that there is a rivalry starting up between these two in a storyline or whatever. So, Simon Saint wins that match. Then the second match comes up. It's the it's the top rope qualifying match. Philip Akron, Simon Saint's rival, defeats James. Uh, glad to see that they actually gave James a chance. Because James is a really good performer. He won the Blue Belt Championship twice. And I my respect because of it. And I feel like he has a lot of potential, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in the future. But that means Philip Akron and Simon Saint are, are 
rivals, and they're in a storyline, but they're also in the 20-man top rope match, which means if they meet each other in the top rope match, then they may focus on each other, you know, more than than the other performers in the ring at that time. Um, which, you know, which could also cost, cost them the win, but we'll get into that uh, in a few weeks in my top rope uh, preview and prediction video. Um, Philip Akron, I think he won off of a big boot and pinned James for the win. For the win. Um, and then Simon Sane appeared on the Titan Tron as Philip, uh, Philip Akron was walking up the stage. Um, he, he told Philip Akron that you know, he was going to, you know, he was going to, no, no, he said if, you know, both, if the both of us are still in the ring by the time that we're both in, we have both entered the match, then you bet your, then you can bet your ass, your ass, then that I will do whatever I can to take you out and ruin your chance at getting a championship match. Which I believe can happen, and I believe Simon Saint would do, um, but only time will tell. Um, and that was pretty much just a preview for their, uh, for the match, at the top row match. One of the you know many previews that we're going to get in the you know in the next few weeks for the top row pay per view. Um, so just you know look out for that one. Uh, third match was possibly the best. Yeah, I think it's the best match on the card. Um, it was the top rope qualifying match. It was an eight-man tag team match. Benny Franklin and Zarenko. Hill... Oh, let me let me tell you like this: new unified USW tag team champions Benny Franklin, Ezra Hills, along with international champion Fernandez and Gringo, defeated Cannon, Prophecy, Mojigeta, and Western Light to qualify for the top rope match. This match went on for about 20 minutes. Each performer got a fight, uh, got a point in the match. It started out as the ending, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say started out, but the it ended when um, the bad guys got interfering with the good guys, and the bad guy hit his finishing move. I believe it was Ezra and Kills in the ring at the time, hit his finishing move on Western Light, and then pinned Western Light for the win giving the win to his team, so therefore his team are now in the top rope match. So, looks like we're not going to get a Benny Franklin and Ezra and Kills championship match against Canyon Prophecy. Looks like we're not going to get an international championship match between Mojigata and Fernandez. Um, also, from what it looks like tonight, we're not going to get a blue belt championship match between Ash and Anarchy. I'll get to that in a little while. Um, but, uh, there are, there are positives to this, you know, you have Benny Franklin, Ezra and Kills, Fernandez and Gringo, you get to see what they can do in a high-pressured scenario, um, and at this point you have six people that have been confirmed for the top rope match, so it's, you know, the pressure builds on and on and on with every qualifying match that ends, so, you know, when you're a USW performer and you are you know, you qualify for something, you always have to have your, you sh you always have to make sure that you're not surprised about what comes next, because you never know who's going to qualify, because, you know, for all that we know, uh, Kyle Reese, the owner, could end up qualifying for the, for the, Top row match. Hell, he put himself in the twenty man gauntlet match this past February. Why can't he do it? And you know, at top rope. Um, but you know, I'm not gonna talk too much about that uh, because you know I haven't really seen what they can do under pressure, so I can't really judge them or really talk about them too much um, based on you know whatever their in ring ability that the, the, you know, I'm just gonna stop talking about that, because I'm, I'm losing my train of thought, I'm losing my words, so I'm just gonna move on, it's just, I haven't seen them under pressure, or work under pressure too much, so, you know, that's why I'm just gonna wait and see, and that's why I can't judge, because I don't really have some, anything to judge, or I don't really have anything based off of what I can judge, so, leave it at that. Um, afterwards was the fourth match, and it was a no disqualification match 
for the Extreme Championship. Crimson Red puts his championship rematch tonight, or well, last night, um, and ends up the result ends up being Titanfall defeats Crimson Red to retain the Extreme Championship. Um, back and forth match, the only weapons that were used were a chair and a table. And that was when um, Crimson Red did a leg drop on Titanfall through a table. They started throwing the chair at each other multiple times. So the match took place outside the ring most, most of the time, but um, it ended in the ring when Crimson Red went for the pin. Uh, couldn't get it. And, uh, oh no, he went for a pin, and then Titanfall kicked out, but ended up reversing it into his own pin, and he ended up winning through a cradle, a cradle pin, um, which ended up making it, whereas, uh, he pretty much su surprised Crimson Red with that roll-up pin, uh, and retained the Extreme Championship, therefore, I don't know what's gonna happen with Crimson Red. There have been... Rumors about him fighting in a number one contenders match against what will be the new, um, new debuter, Washington. Sooner or, you know, sooner or later, he will debut, and that's where I think he'll be in. Um, you know, he could be in a top rope match. You know, only time will tell. We'll find out later on. Um, afterwards was Titanfall celebrating, tell telling Crimson Red that, um... Even though he, you know, even though Titanfall walked out, you know, the victor, Crimson Red really, uh, I don't know how he phrased it, I think he said something about how he, how Crimson Red fought a good fight, and in his respect, something like that, um, which then pretty much means that he earned, um, his own respect, or his own God damn, I don't know how to say it. He pretty much... He did good. Whatever. He earned the win. That's what I'll say. Um, so, we'll just see what happens from here on out. From here on out, I believe that Titanfall will have a championship match at top, at top rope. So I think he'll probably be one of the only, maybe... Well, probably only one of those either three or four people to defend their championships, uh, so, yeah, um, so that went on, there were a lot of commercials tonight, or last night, uh, which were pretty cool, pretty interesting, uh, to see that USW has a bunch of these, uh, commercials come out one night, which is something you don't really see when it comes to USW, but, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, fifth match was the top up qualifying match. Uh, Chain Reaction, Indigo Child, Dustin Raymond, and Blade defeated TJ, Will Ball, Dwayne Porter, and Switchblade. The match ended terribly um, when Chain Reaction advertently got Will Ball counted out, which got him the win, which just made the match just like, really, what the fuck was that? You end the match like that. Come on. I'm pretty sure you could have done better even without booking the match. If you would, I'm pretty sure, what I'm trying to say is, I'm pretty sure you could have had a better rivalry had you ahead of time booked the match. Now, if you had booked the match... The way that the match would have ended would have been better than it ended. It. Fuck it. I'm I'm sorry, guys. My I'm losing my train of thought. Long car ride. Yes, I, I went down to there in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Um, and I'm tired as hell. I just wanted to put this review out uh, earlier on because you know I put out my pay per view review. Um. I put that out late, so I want to put this out earlier, so you're welcome. Um, anyway, uh, bullshit ending. Really unoriginal, really boring, and yeah. Uh, but anyway, Chain Reaction, Indigo Child, Dustin Raymond, and Blade um, qualify for the top rope match, which means a 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven performers so far tonight who have qualified for the top rope match. Because, you know, this is ten, so the eleventh is in this next match. The sixth match on the card was the top rope qualifying match, the final one of the night. Anarchy defeated Ash. Yes, you heard me correctly. Anarchy, the one who fought Ash for the Blue Belt Championship last Sunday, defeated Ash on intensity to gain access into the top rope match. Why not just have it for the Blue Belt Championship? I don't know where USW was planning to go with this, but... Uh... I, I really I really don't. I really don't know where USW was trying to accomplish it. Um, rest assured, it was not very good. The match was terrible. The match... Here's what happened. Uh, and I believe this happened in another review in the past that I did. And... I don't think I mentioned it, now that I remember, because I probably would have remembered something like this. But, for the second time this year, the USW ring turnbuckle padding, or turnbuckle, the rope got loose from the turnbuckle, and ended up coming out from the, from the you know, top rope. So therefore, you know how you have three ropes. Just imagine, you know, from the four corners, just imagine one out of those three corners or one out of those four corners, the rope has come out of. And it's the top rope. So therefore, you have three out of the four corners with the rope on, and one without the rope. So, being the genius that Anarchy was, he tied Ash's legs together using the rope. Don't ask me how, he just did it somehow. As Ash continuously tried to struggle to get out, Anarchy would either stomp on his legs, or just watch him squeal trying to get himself free. The fuck was this? That was absolutely terrible. The match ends with Anarchy... I think doing this kind of, like... Like, punch move, and then... Or clothesline move, and then pinning Ash to win. That's bullshit. That's not something you would expect to see with this kind of match. Uh, and also, the way that the match was played out, considering right now Anarchy is a face, Ash is a heel, and for those of you who are new to this channel and to my fan well, fans, to my viewers who are new to this channel and don't really know many wrestling terms, a face is a good guy. A face in wrestling is called a face... Or a good guy in wrestling is called either a face or a baby face. In this case, I call it a face because it, I don't know why. It just sounds more professional. Um, and bad guys are called heels. So Ash is a heel, bad guy. Anarchy is a face, good guy. It made it look like Anarchy was the heel and Ash was the face. Because of the tactics that Anarchy used, tying his legs and just watching him there and then beating Don on him defense while he's defenseless, that was what a heel character does. Now, I don't know if this was trying to end the feud or whatever. Maybe they wanted to start a new feud for the Blue Belt Championship. I wouldn't really blame them because this feud has gone on for a while. But, if that's the case then the ending should not have been booked the way it was tonight. So, before I give myself a headache, I'm going to end, I'm going to stop talking about the, that match. I don't know if Ash is going to have a championship match against somebody or not. We'll find out. So, here we go to the main event of the evening. Six-man tag match. George Martin, Derek Carter, and the USW World Heavyweight Champion, Capital, defeat Alex, Seth, and the USW Champion, Enigma, Zach Hardy. Um, you see what happened was Alex and George Martin started off the match. After about a minute, 
a minute, a fucking minute, without anybody else being tagged in, George Martin gets Alex counted out by throwing him in the backstage area, running to the ring, and beating the count of ten, making Alex unable to beat the count of ten. Therefore, Alex was counted out, and George Martin, Capital, and Derek Carter would hand the w handed the win over Alex, Seth, and Enigma, or Zach Hardy, or whatever. Um... Now this was not a, a top rope qualifying match, so it's not it's not like they earned anything except the win. But it was bullshit. The I believe the final matches. I'm I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about the top rope the the eight man tag where Chain Reaction got Wilbur counted out and the six man tag where George Martin got Alex counted out. The whole entire match, in my estimation, lasted less than five minutes. Maybe four minutes, maybe less. But seriously, out of two of your final three matches on the night, they last around four seconds, maybe less. Maybe more. But are you kidding me? Now, what happens in the end makes up for it a little bit. Um, what happens in the end is, um, Seth punches or punches or pushes George Martin out of the way and jumps over the top rope in the bad guy's corner, the heel's corner, and attacks Capital as Derek Carter goes to attack Seth. Enigma, or Zach Hardy comes out. I'm just gonna call him Zach Hardy. If I call him Enigma, just know that I mean him. Zach, I mean Zach Hardy. Um, Zach Hardy comes over and. Oh, sorry, I was watching this commercial. This The She-Hawks got the punt kicked. I'm happy now. Um, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyway, yeah, Buffalo Wild Wings commercial. Um, But anyway, Derek Carter tries to attack Seth, who's attacking Capital, and Zach Hardy attacks Derek Carter. Then Alex comes running back and starts attacking George Martin, which the three of that, which the six of them get into their own separate, uh, brawls. Um, Seth and Derek Carter, or no, Seth and Capital end up fighting up the stage, and they end up going backstage and fighting backstage. I don't know what ended up happening after that, because they didn't go back and show what happened backstage this, this week. Um, Alex and George Martin, uh, fought to the announcer's table side, and... Uh, George Martin did the senton bomb on George Martin, or Alex did the senton bomb on George Martin through the announce table, um, and Zach Hardy hit three spears, not one, not two, but three spears on Derek Carter, and then held the championship above his head and, uh, said uh, whatever, um, and that's when intensity went off the air. Uh, a few things that I had a problem, a, a trouble, or a problem with. Um, when I, when they had the promo at the beginning of the show, you know, Zach Hardy and Capital talking about who are the better champions. The reason why I said, you know, the better champion, you know, neither of them were the better champion was because neither of them got the win for the team, neither of them even fought in the match. Um, but if you had to go by what the conclusion of the match was, and the aftermath, then you would have to say Zach Hardy ended up becoming the better champion, because, you know, he was the one who stood tall with the title, um, in his hands at the end of the show, so, um, yeah, whatever. Um, Ash and Anarchy, I don't know why you saved this match to now, I don't know what you were planning to do, um, that's just stupid. Um... Uh, rivalries that I kind of want to see end. I want to see the Ash and Anarchy rivalry end. I think it's just, I think it's getting old for that. Um, I want to, the rivalries I want to see start are Simon Saint and Philip Akron, and it looks like it's possibly going to be James and Tallman Chris Ross. Um, I want to see a new rivalry between Titanfall and Crimson Red. Less of MC4, more of Crimson Red. Um... And that's pretty much it. Um, you know, you know, it would be cool if um, Zach Hardy got into a rivalry with Capital and Seth got into a rivalry with Derek Carter, kind of switch places. That would be pretty interesting. I, I'd especially like the Zach Hardy and Capital one because that would be pretty cool. That'd be awesome. Um, 
But also, something that I realized was people in the audience um, held up signs for some reason, and I don't know what this came from. I know Zach Hardy mentioned that on um, a podcast one of his friends was doing, um, and so he said, you know, he called himself this nickname or whatever. There were signs in the audience that said, Zach Hardy, the real indigo in all of professional wrestling. Oh, in all of, the, in all of professional wrestling's history or something like that. But what would be cool is if you had an indigo versus indigo match. If this is his nickname, which I feel like they're going to go with now. It'd be awesome to have an Indigo Child vs. Zack Hardy um, rivalry. You know, the real Indigo of professional wrestling vs. the real Indigo Child. Of, you know, or the or the Indigo Child. Um, that's something that I think would be cool. Um, but, I'm not going to get into that now because it seems like, at Top Rope, it seems like we're going to get Capital and Seth. We're going to get Enigma and Derek Carter, Alex and George Martin... Um, I think we're probably going to get James and Tallman Chris Ross. Um, probably going to get Titanfall and Crimson Red. Um, I don't know what else. I think, um, I think we may end up getting one of those tag team matches. But we'll find out later on. Uh, I know for sure it's going to be Seth and Capital, uh, for the world title. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Enigma and Derek Carter. For the USW title, uh, I'm pretty sure Alex and George Martin now because of this match that they had in the main event. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching. That was my review on the September 3rd, 2014 edition of USW Wednesday Night Intensity. Uh, remember, viewers, to like, favorite, and subscribe for more. I'm Chase Clover, signing off.